Hello guys, in this video, we will talk about the menstrual cycle. So, the menstrual cycle is, it consists of two synchronized entities. One which is your ovarian cycle and the other one which is your uterine or endometrial cycle. Now, these two cycles may seem different, but remember, they go hand in hand. So, this happens together. So, together, they are the menstrual cycle. So, we will see each of this in detail. So, first, the ovarian cycle. It is the development of the follicle. So right from your primary follicle till your corpus albicans, that whole process is your ovarian cycle. And in that, you have a process known as ovulation here, which happens on the 14th day. That, that's when the oocyte, it, the oocyte, it comes out. Next, your uterine or your endometrial cycle. In this, your functional layer of the endometrium sheds. Your menstruation happens. So these two cycles, we will study about them. Now, to begin with, let's see some of the few key words we need to know. First, menarch. Menarch is when you get your first period. Menopause is when it is your last period. After that, you won't have any menstruation. Now, an average cycle consists of 28 days. In a normal human being, the average cycle is of 28 days. Now, how do you start counting this? It begins, you start counting on the first day of menstruation, this one. So this is your day one. That's how you start counting. And always remember that ovulation, the release of the oocyte happens on day 14. You can see here in this graph, day 14 is your ovulation. It, it's when your oocyte is released. Now let's see each of these cycles in detail. First, your ovarian cycle. It consists of three phases. The first is your follicular phase. The second is your ovulatory phase. And the third is your luteal phase. Let's begin with the follicular phase. With the name itself, we can see that there is something happening to the follicles, right? So see, let's start. Your primordial follicle over here to your graphene follicle or your mature follicle. So right from here, Till this mature follicle, this much is your follicular phase. Now, what happens in this? First, your primordial follicle, there is an additional layer of granulosa cells forming. You can see here, there is only one layer here. But here, there are multiple layers. So, your primordial follicle becomes your primary follicle. Now, how does that happen? Now, in the first few days, when our menstruation starts, the level of FSH and LH slightly increase and this promotes the growth of your granulosa cells. More layers are being added. Also, additionally, what happens is your, there, are, there is a formation of your theca cells. This happens eventually, like first there is one layer and then more layers are formed. One of them is your theca cells layer, which is formed. And these theca cells secrete your estrogen and progesterone. And to be more specific, the theca interna is the one which secretes it. Now next, what happens as we proceed? Your granulosa cells, you remember these are your granulosa cells. These granulosa cells, they start secreting a fluid known as your follicular fluid. It's a fluid which is high in estrogen. And together, an accumulation of this fluid is known as your antrum. Your antrum. So this is nothing but accumulation of your follicular fluid. So these are the things that happen in your follicular phase. The follicles develop. Now, one important fact to remember is that the process from your primary follicle over here till your antrum over here, they are mainly influenced by your FSH alone and not LH. It's only due to the influence of your FSH. So this, these were the key points to remember in the follicular phase. Now, one more thing, you know that in, in the female body, there are many such uh, follicles being developed, but only one follicle reaches your maturation. Only one of them will become your pre-ovulatory or your mature follicle. And the others will undergo atresia. They'll undergo degeneration. Now, that is also important. Why? Because that prevents many implantations, many ovums to get implanted in the uh, uterus. So that is one important quality of your other follicles being degenerated. And in the end, one mature follicle is formed, which is a pre-ovulatory or your mature follicle. Now, the second stage of your ovarian cycle is your ovulatory phase. 
again by the name you know that in this ovulation happens what was ovulation you can see in this diagram ovulation is the release of the ovum so together the ovum the ovum over here and the corona radiata layer is being expelled from the follicle now in a normal 28 day cycle it always occurs on the 14th day 14th day is the day in which ovulation will occur now let's see how the hormones and the how the hormones play a role here so what happens is two days before ovulation there is a lot of lh and fsh mostly a lot of lh which compa with compared when compared to fsh now that causes swelling of your follicles and in the end these follicles rupture when they rupture they release the ovum outside and one more effect of lh is the lh it changes your granulosa cells and your theca cells and therefore they start forming your progesterone your gran where were your granulosa cells here and your theca cells now they start secreting progesterone and that is influenced by your lh and the most important fact to remember is if there is no lh there will be no ovulation so ovulation requires this high lh surge this phenomenon is your lh surge that happens before ovulation and therefore it leads to your ovulation so this is very important now the final phase of your ovarian cycle is your luteal phase now as we saw previously the granulosa cells and your theca cells in the influence of lh start secreting progesterone and estrogen right now these become your luteinizing cells see the name is luteinizing hormone it causes the formation of luteinizing cells that process is known as luteinization and once these luteinizing cells if you take a whole mass of these luteinizing cells together it is your corpus luteum this structure over here which secretes your progesterone and estrogen now what happens to this corpus luteum 12 days after ovulation it starts to degenerate it starts losing its secretory function it starts to degenerate forming your corpus albicans in the end again let's come back to our hormones now as you know that there is a high level of estrogen and progesterone now as you can see here because they are secreted by your corpus luteum so that signals the anterior pituitary to secrete less amounts of fsh and lh it's a negative feedback one more thing your luteinizing luteinizing cells remember these luteinizing cells form because of lh they secrete inhibin and if you remember in the male reproductive chapter we learned that sertoli cells also secrete inhibin this is the same inhibin and this leads to less amount of fsh so what happens after 12 days the corpus uh, corpus luteum starts degenerating it loses its secretory function you have less fsh less lh less estrogen less progesterone now together all these factors together when they happen together your corpus luteum completely degenerates and this process is known as involution of your corpus luteum it happens 12 days and in the end what is formed is your corpus albicans now after this process as you can see all these hormones here have decreased significantly so therefore there are no hormones again the body will tell the pituitary gland there are no hormones we need them now therefore again the anterior pituitary will start secreting your fsh and lh and again a new cycle will begin therefore again new uh, the follicles will start growing and new cycle will begin let's take a moment to come back to the follicular phase you remember how was it influenced by more fsh and lh will cause these formation of theca cells will which cause the granulosa cells to grow so that all happens over here when there are no hormones again your anterior pituitary signal fsh and lh is released and the new ovarian cycle begins so this was an overview about your ovarian cycle let's summarize it in this graph the first graph tells you about your gonadotropic hormone levels which is your fsh and lh the second is your ovarian cycle which we just saw now the third is your ovarian hormone levels which is your estrogen and progesterone and for the time being we won't look at this we'll look at this in the end when we study about the uterine cycle and these are the days day 1 day 0 day 14 and day 28 a normal 28 day cycle so let's see what happens first 
now your follicle start growing you are in your pre ovulatory phase your follicle start growing at that time you remember they start secreting estrogens so therefore your the estrogens they increase and how is this influence this is influenced by your fsh and lh initially to help these follicles to grow then when you reach your 14th day you have ovulation and we learn that ovulation requires an lh surge can you see this graph going up a lot of lh is secreted which causes this follicle to rupture and the ovum to come out next you have the luteal phase you can see this it's marked here follicular phase luteal phase ovulation now what happens in the luteal phase the theca cells they start becoming lutein cells the corpus luteum is formed this corpus luteum is formed and it secretes high levels of estrogen and progesterone so see the levels of est the progesterone and estrogen are significantly high over here and because of that they exert a negative feedback to what your fsh and lh therefore the levels here in the luteal phase of fsh and lh are low now towards the end it starts degenerating right towards the 12th day after the 12th day of ovulation it loses its secretory function it starts to degenerate therefore the levels of progesterone and estrogen again fall and when this fall there is a complete degradation a complete involution of your corpus luteum again your body will start signaling that, that there are no hormones no estrogen no progesterone therefore again you can see at the end the levels of fsh and lh start to increase and therefore a new cycle begins all over again so this this keeps on happening now let's talk about the uterine cycle the uterine or your endometrial cycle as i said these two go hand in hand now this also has three phases first is your menstrual phase your proliferative phase and your secretory phase now let's talk about menstrual phase this is when your mens menses happen it is between your day 1 to day 5 in this your endometrial layer sh is shed off and it is your stratum functionalis which is shed off now as you know here you have less amounts of estrogen and progesterone let's take a moment to come back to the graph see initially day 1 to day 5 over here here you have less amounts of estrogen and progesterone and because of that no more growth happens and the whole layer is shed off one fact to remember is during your menstrual phase you lose 40 ml of blood along with 35 ml of serous fluid this much is lost and why do why doesn't our menstrual fluid or the blood do not clot it is because it has a non clotting it is non clotting because it has the presence of this fibrinolysin which prevents its clotting one more thing that happens in your menstrual phase is something that your leukocytes are released when your endometrial layer is shed off a lot of leukocytes come and accumulate in that area and that is your leukorrhea and in this your uterus is highly resistant to infection why because there are many leukocytes over there and this property is extremely important of the uterus second your proliferative phase proliferation that means regeneration formation of new as we saw in the ovarian cycle when proliferation happens new granulosa cells are formed same thing happens over here now your ovary at that time it starts proliferating and it starts producing estrogen well, let's come back now estrogen is starting to get produced by these folic granulosa cells therefore your proliferative phase begins due to the influence of estrogen there is new cell growth the endometrial surface is reepithelized and that takes about 4 to 7 days after your menses now just before ovulation before the 15th day the endometrial lining is the most thick it is very thick just because of all this proliferation and reepithelization that has taken place and this also in this phase your glands all your mucus glands all which are lining your uterus they secrete, secrete thin mucus now what is the importance of thin mucus now remember this phase it is preparing your body it is preparing for fertilization to happen because after this ovulation will happen right where the ovum will be released that is the period when the female is fertile so when there is thin mucus it can easily guide the sperm up towards the tract or else if there is a thick mucus or there is very thick the sperm won't be able to pass 
so correctly at this time there is thin mucus released to guide the sperm and to aid in fertilization this is how our body helps fertilization to occur now the last phase is your secretory phase and this happens after ovulation in this phase you have high levels of progesterone and estrogen why because remember after ovulation your corpus luteum secrete these hormones progesterone and estrogen your lutein cells your corpus luteum now in this stage is basically to prepare our body for implantation so what happens there is more proliferation there is more development of your endometrial lining your blood vessel become more torturous there are more lipid glycogen deposits now again why do we need all this because this happened after ovulation right that means there was a chance that the ovum got fertilized and now it will get implanted it will get implanted after 7 to 9 days after ovulation so for that fertilized egg to get all the nutrients for it to get all nutrients and for it to have appropriate conditions for implantation these are the changes which take place during your secretory phase now implantation happens 7 to 9 days after your ovulation and that time some secretions known as your uterine secretions called your uterine milk provide the main nutrition for that egg when it gets implanted initially so these were the three stages your menstrual phase your proliferative phase and your secretory phase now let's see it again together in a graph first your day 1 to day 5 your menstrual phase at that time your estrogen this is your estrogen this is your progesterone levels are low the endometrium lining it sheds off then you have your proliferative phase which occurs before ovulation this phase over here which occurs before ovulation in that you can see that your endometrial lining is starting to grow the blood vessels are starting to form and at this time is when these granulosa cells start secreting estrogen progesterone and therefore the levels are high now 14th day always you have your ovulation 14th day is when you have ovulation and after ovulation we learn that there is something known as your secretory phase at this time there is more development the blood vessels become more torturous because and you can see there is high level of progesterone and estrogen secreted by this corpus luteum so this was the overview of your ovarian cycle and your endometrial cycle now let's sum this up together in this table here is your ovarian cycle here is your endometrial cycle now day 1 to day 14 is your follicular phase of your ovarian cycle and day 1 to 5 is menstrual day 6 to day 14 before ovulation is your proliferative phase next day 14 is your ovulatory phase that won't change it is always on the 14th day next day 15 to day 28 is the luteal phase of your ovary and day 15th over here to day 28 is your secretory phase so you can see how these both are intertwined how these both go hand in hand so this was all about your endometrial and ovarian cycle thank you